Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. We are third year student of Bachelor in Manufacturing Engineering at University Technical Malaysia Melaka. We would like to present our product of integrated design project that we call as Ultimate Volleyball Pro Launcher. We prepared this video for our panels and our supervisor. My name is Nur Wahida Binti Bahamazin. My name is Sarah Shahira Binti Saifu Bahri. My name is Steve Yuhau. My name is Azam Fikri bin Kamaruddin. And my name is Muhammad Akasha bin Roki. And this is our supervisor, which is Madam Ruzi Hariati binti Hambali. I will start with background of study. The problem scenario of this project is, the volleyball is one of the most widely played sport all over the world that is enjoyed by men and women. It is a game played by two teams, usually of six players on each side separated by a net. There are two critical parts during volleyball games is how a server serves the ball to other side of the team and how the team on other side receive the ball without letting the ball hit the court. During training session, there are may involve at least one player to throw the ball from other side to train the player focusing on how to reflect the serving ball. It will take a risk for the player and may it cause injury lack of energy for training and effect skill development of play. In order to solve these issues is the main aim of the project is to design and develop volleyball launcher mechanism with low cost and lightweight. The objective of this project is to analyze the current problem in volleyball training sport and customer requirement, to design the low cost UVPL mechanism training and to analyze the functionality of UVPL. There are several function limitations for this launcher such as the control box are not including the remote control and LCD display and then the storage are only fit up to 10 balls and the frame should be lightweight. Next is methodology. We apply a knowledge of product development process. This technique has been used. First, morphological chart. It approach to the functional analysis for the mechanism and concept generation. Second, conceptual design. There are five conceptual design for early phase to develop during the brainstorming session. And the third one, screening and scoring concept. It contribute from morphological chart then screen again nine critical specification and again customer needs. The concept with higher ranking with this candidate has been selected since it the most satisfied and can be redesigned in 3D drawing by using Autodesk Inventor software. Okay, so this is the animation of our product. So uh, it's, it is a video that demonstrating how our product works. Okay, first we can adjust the angle up or down. So once we set the angle that we want, uh, as you can see inside the video. Okay, so now we can turn on our launcher. So you can see that the motor will start spinning the rotating wheel and it will squeeze the ball and shoot the ball out. Okay, so for result analysis, I will explain about mechanical engineering analysis. Okay, so in mechanical engineering analysis, there are two parts. So the first one is material analysis and the second one is uh, finite element analysis, which is known as FEA. Okay, so for material analysis, we, uh, we use C, uh, CES EduPack and for the FEA we use Autodesk Inventor. Okay so let's begin with frame. So as you can see here we have a choice of material at here. Okay so as we know frame provides the support for the whole product. So a design requirement had been developed with a few of constraints. Low density, high hardness, high tensile strength, high pressure toughness and high yang modulus and of course it must be as cheap as possible. So by using CES EduPack, uh, the material properties can be determined and after that, we can carry out screening and scoring process. So uh, here is the result. So as you can see, low carbon steel managed to score the highest among this material. So low carbon steel is our choice for frame. For the material choice of uh, storage and railway, so uh, the process is the same as previous but with different design constraints. Uh, we want it to have uh, corrosion resistant, high pressure toughness, high stiffness, low density and of course the density have to be as low as possible. So after going through the screening and scoring process, so here is the result and you can see that the stainless steel is the highest among this material so it becomes our choice of material. 
Okay, so for FEA, we have a few of lots that I think on our frame. So we have the lots by the DC motor, we have the lots by the battery, and we have the lots by the uh, railway. So as you can see, this is the calculation. So the total force acting on our frame is 340 Newton. So here is the result for the stress test. Uh, we can see that the maximum stress acting on our frame is 28.351 MPa and minimum stress is 28.287 MPa. So the UTS for low carbon steel, UTS uh, ultimate tensile strength, the UTS for low carbon steel is 27 MPa. So this shows that the frame is actually able to support every part of our product. So we can also calculate the safety factor for our product by dividing UTS of low carbon steel with the minimum stress. So after the calculation, we get uh, we can actually get a safety fa safety factor, a very high safety factor as high as seven. So for the displacement analysis, we found that the maximum displacement can be found is zero point four seven seven millimeter. So the value is actually very small and unnoticeable with our naked eyes. So from the result of FEA. We can tell that actually our pro, uh, our frame design is very rigid and solid that can support our product. So continuation to the results and analysis. I will be explaining about the human factor engineering analysis. So in this project, we use the ruler assessment from Katia to simulate the motion and to analyze the human behavior when operating the UVPL. In this slide, the table shows the final ruler score. The score of each percentile for both genders is 3, which means that the product is acceptable and ergonomically friendly. So moving on to the engineering cost analysis. The estimation cost for the UVPL depends on the variable cost, fixed cost, manufacturing cost, selling price per unit, unit contribution, and also breaking even analysis. So after calculating the fixed and variable costs, we can find the breaking even analysis or the BEA by dividing the fixed cost over unit contribution. So in this slide, shows that after we calculate the BEA, we can find that we have to sell around 687 units of the UVPL to achieve break-even. Now, I will explain about the sustainability of this product, starting from the design for environmental. This concept has been taken to assess the degree of environmental impact. Sustainable Mind is capable to create a scoreboard for our product or concept regarding the sustainability based on their database. Based on the scoreboard for our product, the impacts per functional units for this product are 5.2 millipoints per year. Under ecological damage is low and the consumption of fuel is very low for this product. The greatest impact of our product comes from the damage to human health. However, the respiratory effects and the smoke are very low. In the figure, carbon footprint refers to carbon dioxide emission into the atmosphere. The higher the carbon footprint means, the greater the carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is the causative cause of global warming. But, UVPL managed to achieve a very low carbon footprint based on the above results. Take a look at the life cycle analysis, starting from the material, manufacture, and lastly the recycling part has been considered. From the material selection, we're making sure the properties of each material must be low overburden waste and low emission to the water. Next, the manufacturing production, we considered not contribute into the global warming during the process. After that, product packaging and transportation to distribute the product especially the emission of carbon dioxide. Then move into the use part, where the energy use, power usage, and waste electricity to be considered. Lastly, the end of life of this product. We know that there is a lot of metal that being used in this volleyball launcher that will contribute to the waste. 
even though the disposal of metal waste to landfill is not harmful to the environment but it is a waste resources that we need to consider. Let's move on to the next part which is the design for manufacturing and assemble. As you guys can see this is the table of information structure of this product. From this data, we did some calculation as shown in the figure and got 15%. The design efficiency of 15% is acceptable according to the decision matrix and we decided to proceed with this design. Now I will continue our presentation with product testing. We have been done the digital prototype testing and the result have been taken. We've made these three parts of our product to be test by using the Autodesk Inventor 2020. The first part of our product is launcher wheel. This high friction between launcher wheel and volleyball is needed to be test because the five spinning are required to launch the ball. Then is the DC motor. The DC motor with high rotational speed and counter rotating and we have the small gap between the wheel and slightly smaller than the size of the volleyball so the ball will be squeezed and we, uh, before being launched to the air then is we test the rubber because the counter rotating launch wheel due to high coefficient of friction so better friction have a better launch but unfortunately due to the limitation of Autodesk Inventor 2020 there is no other option of the wheel or applying torque to the wheel. To spin the wheel faster, the higher torque is applied. But in our case, a high-speed DC motor provides a low torque. In the other words, a simulation is only to show this product that can launch the volleyball but with the output of the torque. The 9 Nm of torque is applied on the wheel in the counter direction. So the launching only be on 30 degree. The result have been shown above before i end our presentation i will conclude all the presentation the first is the project planning that has been followed next is we have been generate the design concept in order to choose the best solution for our product and the improvement in the time of the cost assembly has been made to our product by using the dfma and that is the dfe has been approached to evaluate the environmental impact and lastly the development on the new structure of volleyball that meet the, the customer requirement on our product that's all for our presentation thank you